now reflect and that's that's really the the juicy part that's really the interesting part point number one the number of levels or energy levels okay number of energy levels increases with well depth okay but there is always at least one solution and therefore level so if i have 10 levels remember that to each level there corresponds to a wave function so if I have 10 values of allowed K, therefore 10 values of allowed energies, that means I have 10 wave function solutions. Okay, so, uh, okay, so levels and uh, size. Okay. Um, uh, at least one solution, therefore, Each level corresponds to a wave function. Even as u naught goes to zero. So if I have an extremely shallow well, a very shallow well, there will always be a solution lying here somewhere. And you can see that from this graph, right? So no matter how so notice cotangent and tangent, the blue and the black line, they, they don't depend on, on the script D. The well depth is hidden in script D. If I make script D smaller and smaller, so this is, this is 100, this is 20, this is 5, there will be at least one intersection. So here there's two intersections, but if I make script D even smaller, there will be just one intersection uh, lying somewhere on this blue curve, on this blue cotangent. So there's always at least one solution. Uh, so that's math, okay? So let's just keep on summarizing, and then we can go on a second path, uh, path uh, pass and try to understand why that is. As, so this is interesting. This is point number two. As the well depth goes to infinity as you make it deeper and deeper the lower uh, uh, lying 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 values of kl approach more and more, what do they approach? What you would expect them to approach, the results of the infinite del infinite well result, right? Infinite well analysis. That's why we do the infinite well, because if the well is finite but deep, the low-lying solutions are pretty much the same as the infinite well solutions. So they approach more and more n pi, because that's what the infinite well, right? So recall infinite well result, k sub n equals n pi over l. So k sub n times l equals n pi. This is very interesting. Let's see, is that, is that really true? Well, yeah, you can just see directly from numbers. You see, if I look at the dl equals 100, you see as the depth of the well, as the depth of the well goes to infinity, as the depth of the well goes to infinity, your intersection points become the same as the intersection of either tangent or cotangent with a zero. Okay? Because you, just, you can just see this from, from the graph. So as the well depth goes to infinity, the intersection points become the same as the intersection points of the either cotangent or tangent with zero. 
And that happens at either odd number of pi's, that's for the tangent, or even number of pi's, that's for the cotangent, right? So we get these results for the infinite well right on the x-axis. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, right? And the reason I want to look at the intersection of tangent or cotangent with zero is because this whole thing right here goes to zero as the well depth goes to infinity, right? So it's the same as intersection of tangent or cotangent with, with the x-axis. Now, does that make sense? Well, that makes sense because as you expect the results to match the infinite well results as you make the well depth larger and larger. And if the well depth is infinite, then all of the solutions will match exactly to the infinite well result. Next, for a fixed value of the well depth u naught, the lower lying, maybe a lane are closest to n pi. Well, that's just sort of repeating what I said. But as we look at higher and higher levels, the energies of those levels are more and more different from the infinite well uh, solution or infinite well case. Let's see. Is that true? Well, yeah, let's look at this DL, a script DL equals 20. This is not zero, this is 20. Um, you see, guys, there's a lot of information hidden here. So low-lying levels, the low-lying, for example, for example, this one, it's very close to pi, this one, it's still very close to two pi. This is still kind of close to three pi, but eventually they depart, right? So this one, this one is already quite a bit off from four pi. This is even more off from five pi. And you can see that it's off on the lower side. So in other words, if we compare, the infinite well with a finite well, so this is to infinity, to infinity versus a finite well, both of the same length uh, with L. So here are our energy levels one, two, let's say one. two, and three. This one will be almost the same, maybe just a tiny bit lower. This one will be also almost the same, but more, slightly more lower. This one will be even more lower, okay? So I would add the higher up very non-scientific language, right? Larger n. The more, the greater 
how should I say, the greater, the, the, the further below of that infinite well result is the corresponding energy level. The ground state is most similar to the ground state of the infinite well. And then the discrepancy grows and the higher the level, the larger the discrepancy and the discrepancy is such that the energy level of the finite well is always below than the corresponding energy level of the infinite well. So that's what I'm trying to say. So energy level, so. So that's what I'm trying to say. I haven't said anything about wave functions yet. What do you expect for the wave functions? You would probably expect the wave functions to also be most closely, closely matching to the infinite well result for the low light lying levels, but more and more different from the infinite well result for the higher uh, lying level, for more excited states. And you're correct. What was true about the wave function of all the states in the infinite well is that they had to go to zero at the edges of the well. Now this is no longer true. And it will be more and more not true the higher up you go. In other words, the deeper lying levels will have very little leakage outside of the, of the, of the well in the classically forbidden regions. But the higher up you go, the broader and broader are those exponential wings, and you have more and more leakage outside of the classically allowed region into the classically forbidden region. So let's see. So the higher the level, I, I should say maybe scientifically, i.e., the more excited states. the more the wave function leaks out. Because remember, we have the exponential bits in the classically forbidden regions. Leaks out beyond the classically uh, beyond the classically Oh, let's say it leaks out into the classically forbidden regions one and three, right? This is because kappa, remember e to the minus kappa x type of, the, the solutions there are either e to the minus kappa x or e to the kappa x. And because kappa is given by this over h bar. So the closer is e to u naught, right? So, so here's your u naught, and here's your e. And so the closer the e is to the top of the well, the smaller is this kappa. Okay. 
small kappa means slow exponential decay or growth. Okay. I have a question. What are the units of kappa? Arguments of transcendental functions like sines, cosines, logarithms, arctangents, exponentials have to be unitless, or dimensionless. So if this is meters, this has to be one over the meters. Or if this is length, this has to be one over the length. So one over the kappa as dimensions of length. And it measures how far into the classically forbidden region we must go for the wave function to decrease by a standard amount e to the minus one equals approximately 0 0.37, one third. The smaller the kappa, the, sm the slower is the exponential decrease. So the further out into the classically forbidden region we have to go in order for the wave function to fall off by this representative amount. Okay, so one over kappa is often called penetration depth. Okay, a characteristic distance by which a particle can penetrate into a classically forbidden region. It can go much further out, but the probability decreases exponentially, right? So once you go one or two kappas away from the boundary, the chances of finding a particle there are very, very small. And one over kappa is like a characteristic distance by which you have to go for the chances to drop dramatically. Okay. And also, each successive level has a larger k, i.e. the wavelength in region two, the classically allowed region, decreases. And it doesn't just decrease in a continuous manner. Remember, we have discrete solutions. So each successive mode has one more node, okay? That's the usual situation with the increasing number of, of nodes, or you could say it has one more wiggles. And let me write another point. So this is what point four, is it point four or is it point three? So this is point one, two, three, four, five. Finally, we notice that K is proportional to one over L. Thus, again, as the well gets wider, the k's and the e's and the, 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 the spacing decreases. Okay, so again, just like 
in infinite well case. So let me draw a couple of wave functions. The first wave function here looks like that. The second wave function looks like that. Um, so here, the first wave function will look very similar, but it will leak out a little bit. Okay. The second wave function will leak out more. You see, it doesn't quite complete. And the higher wave function will leak out even more. If you square it, the probability density goes to zero here, but it leaks out like e to the minus two kappa L or e to the two kappa, sorry, e to the minus two kappa X or e to the kappa X, you square the wave function. Notice that here, the solution is exponentially decreasing and here it's exponentially increasing. So the inflection point cannot happen in the classically forbidden region. 